Yes. Okay. So, so Nikki, could you just tell us uh, briefly how this book project got started? Okay, yeah, sure. So Buried Treasures is actually a project that came out from the Council of Indigenous People, which was a two-year grant to document um, Taiwan indigenous archives that are held here at SOAS. And um, what did you find particularly interesting in doing this, this project? Um, it's just the breadth of material that actually does exist on Taiwan. Um, so not just on Taiwan, but actually on the indigenous people itself. So a lot of the archives have already been catalogued specifically for Taiwan. So if you go through the search engine and type Taiwan, you do get a list of archives. However, obviously material that relates to Taiwan indigenous people had not been catalogued as a separate entry. So one of the things that perhaps interested me the most was just the amount of material that we have that pertain to the indigenous people. And how difficult did you find putting this, this book together? Because it is your, um, uh, your fourth book. <laughs> and if you compare it to your earlier publications, was it um, more challenging in any way? Um, I think so, because the project in many ways was a twofold project. One was to catalogue the archive, and that was quite an extensive work. And I was quite fortunate that it was at the same period of which I was teaching here. So I was able to kind of draw on certain support from the student bodies in helping to kind of identify the archive. I think without that support, the project would have been a bit more difficult to have achieved. Um, but of course, the previous project, book project that I was working on here for the, the first two years of this kind of time that I was here, um, was to catalogue the archives that related to the Presbyterian Church. So this really was kind of an opportunity to move out of one collection here at SOAS to kind of explore some of the other collections. And that I found particularly interesting, particularly with regards to NGOs um, and other campaign groups and that material they had on Taiwan I found particularly interesting. And when you were going through the archives, were there any kind of particular surprises that you weren't expecting to find? I think um, the biggest surprise was the map collection. Um, uh, I've, I've, prior to coming obviously to the UK when I was living and doing my postgraduate studies in Taiwan was that I became quite familiar with uh, Nantian which is the publishing company um, in Taiwan and they have quite an extensive map collection. Um, and if I'm honest with you, I thought that was probably kind of it, that any kind of map on Taiwan was kind of known to Nantian. But um, what I found particularly interesting was actually the map collection here at SOAS, which was actually before I wasn't aware that it did exist. Um, so parts of that collection, that map collection, are in, are in the book itself. And, and if, um, if people would like to buy the book, how can they actually get hold of it? What's the best method? Um, it's actually interesting. I found it in S Light Bookshop when in time. So I mean, it's, it's readily available through online means. Um, I think Amazon would have it. But however, if anyone is at the book launch tonight, I've actually got it as a discount rate. Probably won't help for the video, but um, oh, the fur, yeah. that's good. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, one of the things I always I'm always impressed is when I go to Chumpi to S Light. Yeah. Uh, they're much more likely to have more likely to have your books than mine. I'm <laughs> asking <laughs> you to the cost, perhaps. Ah, yes, that could be. So, what is the rough price? Um, I, I think it's around twenty twenty five pound at the normal. I think about one thousand two hundred NT. Okay, which yes. I think is about yeah, twenty pounds so now. A, um, a good price yeah, for a so, hardback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Okay, let's finish there. <laughs>